We already know for a fact that Blue Box has the ability to have an effect on global energy consumption, carbon emissions, and human health. And we could do it easier with a fraction of the capital and a fraction of the complexity of what Elon is trying to do. Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. We're brought to you by abetterrootplanner.com. Use our link in the show notes below to get a 30-day free trial to the premium app. And you can help support our channel by heading over to ecoware.us to find all sorts of new designs every week. We carbon offset the production, the shipping, and the life cycle of every product, and we plant 10 trees for every order. This episode is sponsored by Keeps. Keeps is a subscription service that makes it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. It's just a fact. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. I'm living proof of this. The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Then your treatment is shipped right to your door every three months, so you just set it and forget it. Keeps offers generic versions of the FDA-approved medications for hair loss, which makes it more affordable. Yeah, why spend more? Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why hundreds of thousands of men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash now you know or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash now you know. And we're also brought to you by BigBattery.com. No matter what you need to power, Big Battery can provide you with the latest battery tech at the best price per kilowatt hour guaranteed. Their batteries are easily installed, require zero maintenance, and they're made right here in the U.S. Pick up yours today at BigBattery.com and use code now you know for 5% off at checkout. As we enter this July 4th weekend, the entire United States is suffering from an unprecedented heat wave, with several states breaking record high temperatures and sustained highs creating dangerous conditions for millions of people. The only thing keeping vast numbers of the U.S. population alive right now is, of course, air conditioning. But could that be one of the very things that has gotten us into this mess in the first place? According to the EIA, 40% of the U.S.'s total energy consumption is from residential and commercial buildings. One-fourth of all that energy used by buildings is used for AC, just cooling the inside of the building. The U.S. uses as much energy to keep buildings cool as the whole of Africa uses on everything. Bottom line, about 10% of the global energy consumption is used just on air conditioning. That energy is being used to do a fairly simple task. Power a compressor to pump a refrigerant from one heat exchange coil to another. Through the magic of thermodynamics and pressure differentials, the refrigerant flowing through the system is able to take heat from one coil and transfer it to another. This makes one coil cold and another hot. Blow a fan over both to blow the heat off one and blow the cold off another. And you have an air conditioner refrigerator or freezer. Run it backwards and you have a heat pump. This piece of technology was used as far back as 1850, and in that time, it has seen little in the way of innovation. Yeah, the first home AC unit was introduced in 1914, over 100 years ago, and if you called an HVAC repair technician to fix that old unit right now, he'd recognize everything inside because it's essentially the same. Now, the heat exchange coils are extremely important to the operation of an air conditioner. Just like the radiator on your car, these exchange heat between the air and the working fluid flowing through the pipes. Little fins are placed less than a millimeter apart to efficiently transfer heat. But these coils have a little problem. Actually, a huge problem that has plagued air conditioning for over a century. You see, the cold side of an air conditioner condenses water onto the coils. It's not ideal, it's just a byproduct of them being cold. The problem is, Bacteria, mold, and other living stuff loves to live in the little moist crevices in the coil. They build little homes for themselves called biofilm to live more comfortably. This biofilm and the stuff that lives in it creates some problems. Firstly, it ruins the thermal transfer between the air and the coil. It also decreases the airflow that can pass through the coil further reducing performance and adding more stress to the fans and the compressor. And lastly, sometimes the bacteria, mold, and other gunk living in the coils decides it's time to move out, and they hop on the next gust of air, leaving the air conditioner to find another nice place to live, like your house or your lungs. Now, one more thing. We told you about that 10% of the world's energy consumption is used to cool buildings, but that's just today. As the world heats up and we add more people, 
more buildings, more demand for cool interiors, the number of air conditioners is going up fast. According to The Guardian, worldwide power consumption for air conditioning alone is forecast to skyrocket 33 times by 2100. So why are we telling you about all this? Because we just learned about a company called Blue Box that found and patented the solution to this problem that has plagued air conditioners since the beginning. It's deceptively simple, but quite profound. But you know what? Let's have the founder and CEO of Blue Box tell you about it himself. Our ability to control our indoor climate is one of the major drivers of climate change. And people don't really think about how much energy goes into creating cooling. Every modern building in the world is outfitted with an HVAC system. Every single one of those systems is running at some level of inefficiency and poor indoor air quality, and it all gets down to this inability to clean the coils. In a building, let's say, you know, uh, in this hotel, you know, where they were in, uh, s probably up to 70% of all the energy in this building being consumed is going to the HVAC system. Up to half that energy is being wasted right now because the coils are dirty. In big industrial systems, a big problem that they have is, um, biofouling. And this is where bacteria or fungus will grow. And this could be in water systems and this can be in uh, you know, all kinds of equipment. And what happens when bacteria and fungus grows, they, they form what's called a biofilm. If you ever see a snail that goes along the ground and that trail leaves behind, that's a biofilm. Now, biofilms will, it's like a thermal blanket. Once they're on a piece of metal, like on a you know, piece of heat transfer equipment, you can have a piece of metal and not even be able to see the biofilm. It will inhibit heat transfer five times greater than say scale formation. It's really, it's like a gelatinous type of you know, slime. And, and that is the whole point of those fins is to transfer the heat that is, out of it. Th that is why, you know, like in, in all HVAC systems, whether it's your home or whether it's a big giant air handler in General Motors, it's the same design, you know, it's you have fins and then you have these tubes that go through it and they're transferring heat. So you have cold water and it's, it's making everything cold and then air goes through it and the air molecules are bouncing between the plates and then it's, you know, it's 80 degrees, it goes through a, a chilled water that's at 45 degrees comes out at 65 degrees okay, or 50 so, degrees. So I'm know, seeing the problem now. So basically as uh, water condenses on these coils, you get what life likes, which is water. Right, yeah. and so it can live there, and now it's basically making this blanket yeah. over over everything that we're not even pretty much aware of. Absolutely, and this not only uh, causes a problem with heat transfer. Start talking about indoor air quality; it, it causes a whole lot of problems. Since the invention of the HVAC system over a hundred years ago, there's never been a way to clean these coils ever. And you're just telling me that every year it's just going to get worse. Like my HVAC it gets system. Worse. All built, whether it's a casino, a uh, hotel a hospital, uh, a school, or your home. Now, you know, most, almost all buildings, big buildings, especially facilities, uh, have designed into them 40% more excess HVAC capacity than they actually need to keep that building cool. Because they know it's gonna... Because they know this is a problem. Bleach is not gonna remove biofilm. All right. Now it may kill microbes, et cetera, but not the biofilm. So the biofilm is like, like I said, it's this membrane that forms inside. That is the core issue that forms. And what it is, is like sticky paper. And these things are constantly moving air through. So if there's a dust particle, hydrocarbon particle, any kind of thing, it starts sticking to it. And then what happens is deep inside is then it starts creating blockage and it oh, grows. So, so even if you somehow could kill every living thing in there, you're yeah. still leaving the blanket behind. This is where I start thinking about, I'm like, you know what? I can't nuke it with chemicals. It's biological. And again, it was kind of a first principle thing. I'm like, it's gotta be somebody's food source. So today our clients include General Motors, Chrysler, uh, MGM Resorts. Uh, we do half the Las Vegas Strip. So like the Bellagio, Mirage, Mandalay Bay, MGM Grand, Luxor, Excalibur, Tyson Foods, we just did their corporate headquarters, Baylor University, Rice University, UCLA Medical Center, Johns Hopkins University, in New York City, uh, SL Greens, the largest commercial real estate owner in New York City. The, we've done the Chrysler Building, MD Anderson, Sloan Kettering uh, in New York. It's a laundry list. We're going in middle of the day, middle of summer, no downtime with the system, and we're doing cancer wards, intensive care units, and no one can tell we're doing this while we're doing it. So if you didn't catch that, Blue Box has developed a foam with enzymes that break down the organic slime coating on the AC evaporator coil fins and allow air to pass back over them efficiently, like when they were brand new. 
Now, you might be saying, who cares? So what if the AC has to work a little longer or harder? Now in HVAC, you measure airflow, okay? And the coil creates what's called a pressure differential. So you have a blower here, air's coming in. The dirtier that coil is, the greater the restriction, the greater the differential. The rule of thumb, this is just a rough rule of thumb in HVAC is a 1% reduction in pressure drop typically equates to a 1% reduction in the uh, energy consumption of the motor, or, or technically the brake horsepower of that motor. So they took their measurements, I delivered a pressure drop, or reduced the pressure by 40%. Wow. Wait, so, so the motor's working 40% less hard? To move the to same move the volume same. of air. Wow. Because it's working hard, I assume, day in, day out, it's more likely to burn out. And this gets into the problem of coils. Now the thing is, because there's never been a way to get through the coils, once it starts occurring, fouling up, this system is always running under load, and it only gets worse and worse and worse over time. It runs to failure, okay? At some point, and usually in commercial systems, you know, after about 20 years or so, but it could be as fast as five years, depending on your environment and how a you know, bunch of factors, all of a sudden these things plug up and you gotta replace them. Now, to replace a coil like that in a GM plant, that's a $250,000 check. Wow. Okay. So when, and on a massive system, that's 75,000 CFM, because that motor, I believe was a 80 horsepower motor or 75, it's a big motor, all right? Big energy, moving big air, um, and a 40% drop. These engineers, their jaw hit the floor. They're like, what the heck did you do? If you have a box and you have the coil and say you have all this airflow going through it and it's fully fouled up, so a quarter of the air is coming out, all right? Now, because it's fouled, you're not getting, the, the air molecules are not touching the metal. So you're not getting any heat transfer. So not only are you getting a quarter of the air, but that air is say 80 degrees outside and it's coming out, you know, like say 72 degrees, uh, the exit air. Well, that room is gonna be about 75 degrees. It's not gonna get cool. You, you're not reducing the load. Then, you know, we come in and everything is restored to brand new. So now you have four times more airflow and that air is 60 degrees exit air. HVAC system designers factor in this reduced performance. And so when a big building specs out a new HVAC system, they make it 40% bigger than you need. Why? Because they know it's going to degrade over time and no one has figured out how to clean these coils until today. So what Blue Box has essentially done is they found a solution to make the world's air conditioners about 40% more efficient. Now you might be saying, so what? Who cares? You know, the, the little motors in there, they're gonna have to work a little bit harder for a little bit longer. And you know, you're gonna have to be paying a little bit more for electricity, but so, you know, who cares? You know, as long as it's enough to cool the building, you know, oh, of course, you know, maybe when it's dirty, you're gonna clean it, but you know, who cares in general? Well, add up all that savings, and that's a savings of 1,000 terawatt hours per year. That's more energy than Russia, the fourth largest energy consumer uses. Now, you might be saying, well, what does that mean for carbon dioxide emissions? Well, that's half a billion tons of CO2 saved. That's equivalent to 150 million passenger vehicles driven per year. That's equivalent to 80 billion gallons of gasoline. 783 billion pounds of coal burned. 128 million homes electricity use for one year. 179 coal plants. It's the carbon sequestered by 11.7 .7 billion tree seedlings grown for 10 years. That's the carbon sequestered by 868 million acres of forest in one year. And if you're having trouble picturing what that looks like, that's one third the size of the US that's bigger than India. Now you might have missed this important point. The air flowing over those evaporator coils is the air you're breathing right now. Yeah, if those coils are dirty, guess what? You're breathing it. Think about the HVAC system as the lungs of the building. All right, all the air in a building must go through these coils and that air is recirculated. So in any given building, 90% of the air is recirculated and 10% is brought in as fresh outside air. All that air comes in and it's mixed and it's constantly recirculated. And you have, in a, let's say in a big high rise, you have 50 or 100 air handlers and they're, they're distributed. What happens is then they start getting fouled up. Now that does two things on, one it starts inhibiting airflow, all right? Which means that even though you're supposed to be bringing in 10% outside air, 
uh, you may only be bringing in 5% outside air, 3% outside air, because the, the coils are choked up. And then what happens, imagine a building, you have a lot of people in it, and everybody's breathing. They're exhaling CO2, they're carbon dioxide. That air is not, the molecules are not displacing those molecules. And all of a sudden, you have these buildings where the CO2 levels start going up. This is the key source of indoor air quality. Now, if you ever walked into a building and it smells funky, what you were smelling are the coils. Interesting. Now, you know what has the worst coils in the world that you'll find consistently are hospitals. Wait, what? A hospital is a microbial rich environment. It's where all the sick people are at. Now, all that air is recirculated, okay? I have pictures of air handlers that are feeding surgery units that have mushrooms growing out of them. We literally see stuff oozing out of coils. Like it's that bad. All the coils basically uh, are a perfect breeding ground for microbes to exist in. Mm -hmm. And they start taking root. And no one's ever cleaning them. Well, they're cleaning the coils. You know, the facility you know, engineers, are, they're doing all they can to try to keep them clean. The problem is they're only getting the outside 5%. Oh, I see. They can never penetrate that coil. So when they pressure wash, you say you only get 5% you know, of these things. And it looks shiny. Like it looks shiny. Mm -hmm. It looks great. You, you go into air handlers in a hospital and they can look like you can eat off of them and everything like that. But when we go in and, and clean them, uh, all of a sudden you'll see the foam just doesn't go through. It's these massive blockages you know, inside them. So Blue Box, what it, by solving this problem, it's the first process ever that makes it possible to deliver perfect surface area coverage throughout that coil. And then the enzymes go in and they start digesting out all the biofilm, which is the protective nest for the microbes and everything. And everything gets pushed out. That coil is cleaned, it's disinfected, fully restores the airflow. So then you have the ventilation that goes through it. It solves all these different problems. And it's interesting because then you have the, the energy efficiency gains. So whether you care about, let's say your energy bill, how about saving 40% on one of the biggest uses of home energy, your air conditioner? Or maybe you care about the planet. Half a billion tons of carbon dioxide saved from heating up our atmosphere every year. Yeah, we talk about switching to EVs on this channel. That's like 130 million gas cars replaced by electric vehicles. Or maybe you care about dependency on foreign oil. Using Blue Box could save 1.6 billion barrels of oil per year. That's more oil than Iran and Venezuela produces every year. Or maybe you just care about your indoor air quality. I mean, do you really want to be breathing in this? We have the whole fascinating interview with Jim on our Disruptive Investing channel. You can check it out by clicking here. We talk a lot more about the business and investment opportunity side of Blue Box with him. And I know we're going to be talking a lot about this on our Now You Know Investor Club. Yeah, we'll probably have Jim join us on an Investor Club Hangout, which we do every month, where our 1,600 plus members get to meet and ask questions from the founders and CEOs of some of today's most innovative companies. We spoke with Jim about possible opportunities to get in on Blue Box's next funding round. Yeah, and it's your support that makes all this possible. I mean, hitting the like button, subscribing to our channels, that means that we can continue to grow and bring you more fascinating content that you're not gonna find anywhere else because go ahead, search YouTube right now for Blue Box. See what you find. You heard it here first, now you know. This one air handler was feeding the third floor of this hospital and it had developed a rare fungal species deep inside the coils that they, that it was spewing spores, okay? And it was aspergillus, uh, which is, I don't know if, if anybody knows fungus, you don't wanna be near aspergillus, it's a killer. And it shut down this entire third floor for a year. Now, it's really funny, because I pitched this engineer, and he goes, this is awesome. 